Hello and welcome to the City Council synopsis for the meeting of September 27, 2016. It was a jam-packed meeting and it will be impossible for me to give an adequate summary in 3.5 minutes, but I will channel my inner Ethan Hunt and attempt to turn the impossible into the improbable. Hasta la vista, baby. Like that time we turned an animated Elvis into a cute little kitten. Close enough. I'll start with an update on two topics I've been talking about for a few weeks now. There was a public hearing on salary increases for the city council, mayor, and school committee, and another public hearing on increasing the number of signatures required to be on the ballot from 50 to 150. Both ordinances passed with Councillor Elliott being the only councillor to vote against both measures. He does not believe candidates run for the city council because of the money. And while he agrees with the sentiment behind increasing the number of signatures from 50 to 150, he does not believe it will actually work to prevent candidates who aren't serious from getting on the ballot, which is, of course, the ordinance intention. Can I get a new microphone? I think this one has a cold or something. Okay, much better. Representatives from Skanska and Perkman's Eastman, the engineers and architects for Lowell High School Building Project, addressed the council and made it clear that they need help from you. Currently, the project is undergoing a feasibility study and is looking for community input. If you have some ideas and want your voice to be heard on your new high school, call the city manager's office at the number below. The feasibility study is intended to determine the location of the new high school and decide whether it's better to build on a new site or to redevelop the current high school at its current site. As of now, no specific sites have been named. Michael O'Brien and Larry Curtis of Wind Development gave a presentation on the status of the Hamilton Canal District Master Plan. There was a lot of ground covered in the presentation and I implore you to watch the presentation in its entirety by visiting ltc.org's on-demand page. Much of the discussion in the presentation focused on housing, as O'Brien revealed that the residential construction will be the first phase in the development. Some of the counselors made it known that they would like to see all market rate housing to ensure that new residents have the disposable income needed to invest back into the city. O'Brien, however, informed the council that there is a significant funding gap in these large-scale residential projects. In order for a project like this to work, they would need to take advantages of available subsidies. For that to work, they would need what is called a 80-20 split, meaning 80% of the housing would be market rate and the other 20% would be what's called workforce housing. Now, workforce housing is designed to provide affordable rental units for middle-income families. Those families who have too high of a salary to qualify for subsidized housing, but who still can't afford market rate rents. Steve Pangiotakis of Wind Developments, sorry if I butchered that name, said the workforce housing is typically giving to young people who are just starting their careers. Careers like teaching, law enforcement, and nursing. There was an amazing presentation given by Middlesex Community College President Dr. James Marbury early in the night at the Education Partnership Subcommittee meeting. I don't have the time to synopsize that, but I will encourage you to watch the entire subcommittee meeting on demand at ltc.org. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Back to you, Al.